This is You Welcome with me, bitch, Marcela Arguello. My guests today are Ida Rodriguez, who you can catch on episode three of Netflix's They Ready, and Kimberly Clark, who has been seen on Lopez Tonight and Last Comic Standing. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Anything new popping up in your life? Anything going on? You know what? Just trying to work through uh, comedy after you release a special. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How's that? Uh, it's interesting because they don't want to hear the same jokes, but they want to hear the same jokes. Right. Right? <laughs> so you get caught in How this How do you place. do that? Right. They also you want know? the same, like, quality ready jokes. Yeah. That's the other difficulty is, like, churning out the new shit. Yeah. Writing new material mm -hmm. after a special. Yeah. yeah. And you, Kimberly? You're like a little miss. You're always in hiding. I feel like you're I always know, in hiding. I'm elusive. Yeah, you Someone are. Someone introduced me as elusive. I was like, oh, am I the Sade of comedy? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's nice. Like that's that's sexy. I kind of like it too. Yeah, you should like it. Yeah, I was you shocked you were doing this, actually. I, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate it. That's respect right there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because I had somebody be like, uh, who was it, Ray? She was like, oh my God, you're trying to be a late night house? I was like, ew, bitch, no. I'm just trying <laughs> to get bitches on more shit. That's you don't want to appropriate black culture on your, on your way to getting the TV show? <laughs> what? Uh, hey. Oh, man. I thought you yeah. were selling out. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about corporate gigs. Do you do them? Do you hate them? What's the word? What's a good word on corporate gigs? I've done a corporate gig. I feel like uh, how a was corporate gig. You know, a <laughs> corporate gig. A corporate gig. <laughs> One. Um, I actually feel like college gigs are getting like corporate gigs, if not worse. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're actually worse, but I feel like when I was doing colleges a lot, I was getting to like the beginning of how you know, stringent they are about what you say, what you could talk about, can't talk about. And I remember going to a college and they were telling me about this comic that was there before and how they were joking about something that happened on campus and they didn't like that. And so I guess they were giving me the warning shot, you oh, know, shit. don't you do that. Mm. So. But, you, but you, have you ever had problems with that? Because I no, feel I'm like... No, I'm relatively clean. Yeah. I mean, this isn't my issue. But it's also know. not fun, even when you're relatively right, clean. Right, because you're still under that pressure. Like, I could say anything right. or, you know, bring up a topic and it's, like, lights Contra out, yeah. you know? I have a uh, condition. If you book me, you have to book me. So that's me. That's me. That dude. What I fucking when my when they try to get me to do colleges that are PG thirteen, I'm like, no, I don't mm -hmm. need. First of all, what does that mean anymore? Right. Yeah. Because that's open to interpretation. I'm like, if they want me, they have to have me. Yeah, they gotta book me as I am or not, and that's fine. Um, I I did this gig for a company that's a very popular company and it was really I felt like I was in the Stepford Wives mm. it was like this woman's <laughs> event and all the women were like I love people and I <laughs> oh my god and I was like I and hate I everybody I love that that's a Stepford Wives shit for you I mean yeah. I see it too because I hate people period yeah, yeah. But but I, like, I love people I just want to <laughs> connect with everyone and I was like it's crazy. You're like I, I don't know. lie because it's not true yeah. Yeah. you don't want to do you want to connect no, no, with no. Mitch McConnell no. like I don't you know what I mean like I sit there and I'm like get out of here with this book Bullshit. But yeah. um, I try my. I don't. I don't like to feel handcuffed and muzzled. Right. Mm -hmm. and I, I refer to that again. So I don't want to do any other jobs. Um, I'm not that desperate. I rather go do Postmates to make my bills <laughs> than yeah. to be not who I am for a check. Yeah. Right? So that's where I am now. And people get mad at me because they're they they hit you with the who do you think you are? And I'm like yeah. I know exactly who mm -hmm. I am. That's the problem for them because I think. It's also the history of like people doing corporate gigs. I mean, because comedy has been strictly straight white male, mm -hmm. and and they they jump to the chance they see a money offer and they're like, yeah, I can be clean. And then they maybe are, but maybe they struggle through. I mean, I don't know. I'm not watching these corporate gigs that they're up to, mm -hmm. but I assume that they're you know adapting for the for the income. Mm -hmm. And some of, some comics are great at corporate gigs, but yeah. like if it's not for you, I don't understand why people do it. And the more famous you get, the more you can say, right? So yes. Like, mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? Like they give them more leeway. Yeah. They go, the money goes up and they get more leeway. Yeah. But you know, it's a bunch of repressed people, like yeah. corporate people that work in those structures where they can't be themselves anyway. They can't masturbate. They the want to hear, they, they want to hear you. They, they want their Get off the rails. Yeah. 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 Right. I know a lot of That's clean true. comics that make me want to jump off of the <laughs> Like, but so many off. of them are making so much money. Yeah, but I mean, like that—that's not a good motivator. I mean, that's the no. problem with a lot of people. You know, when I was taking meetings with agencies, I like had them all lined up, and I, the first I sat down, the first thing I did was like, I'm not motivated by money. 
So if you can't fuck with that, then you can't fuck with me at all. I'm not motivated by money either. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. It doesn't take you anywhere in comedy. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you can be the richest, unsuccessful comedian in the game. I know a lot of people who have a lot of money and nobody respects them. Right. People right. like look at them and say, did you watch that? Ooh, that was terrible. Right. When you think about comedy and what motivates comedians, most of them just want to make people happy, want to make people laugh, and they want to heal. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't matter how you feel about the comic and the content. If you really look at the intention of that person, how many people actually go on, st on stage and say, you know what? I'm gonna go shit on black people. <laughs> this is the day right, where they right. all gonna catch it. Right. They just, that that's just not the the reality yeah. of most comedians. The way they express what they have to say may be problematic to you because of usually it's privilege that feels disrupted by that. Because right. those mm -hmm. of us that grew up in struggle are like, oh, that's an expression of what I'm familiar with. Yeah, and it's also it, if you have different types of people in your life or you grew up watching, like you know how to adapt and accept different types of voices. Because I was thinking about my dad and that my dad is like this classic machismo Latino, mm -hmm. and it has kind of helped. Cause he, but he wasn't like the he wasn't the worst machismo man I've ever met in my whole life. But like when you're young, you're just like this sexist guy. What's his mm -hmm. deal? Right. And then you get old and you're like, well, at least he's not raping bitches. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like there's actual things that people are actually doing that's yeah. terrible. And it's like to 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 want to police language is what complicates all the stand-up shit. The thing is for me is because of where I grew up and how I grew up to survive. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna let somebody, one person's point of view, disrupt the way exactly. you feel about yourself? It also strikes me as people who don't know how to navigate what's happening within themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to navigate the problems that are happening with the people in their lives. Because I've, I've had a situation with, between homegirls Mm -hmm. Where one girl was trying to be like, you, your boyfriend likes Quentin Tarantino, and you, and she tried to lecture the boyfriend, and I pulled it to the side, and I was like, bitch, your boyfriend likes Quentin Tarantino. Like, why aren't you talking to him? But I am talking to him. I was like, well, then handle that and deal with that before you come at some other bitch. Cause like, damn, calm down. Quentin Tarantino gave uh, Salma Hayek naked with some snakes around her body to the world. <laughs> and nobody hates Quentin Tarantino. And I like boys. I'm like, that is the god of all gods. That's hilarious. To some people. Oh, yeah, god. that's funny. So I wanted to ask you both of what it's like as a woman who is black and brown and how that experience has shifted over the years as a comedian. I guess people say I'm not typical or mm -hmm. whatever, <laughs> whatever that means. What is typical? I wasn't raised rich, but at the same time I wasn't poor. You know, we weren't the Cosbys, but you know, we were like right in the middle. We were like the Winslows, okay. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood in Syracuse, New York. Yikes. But at the same time, my dad was a preacher, and so, you know, our church was on the south side of Syracuse, which you know, if there's a South Side, it, <laughs> you know what the South Side denotes. <laughs> you know, everybody was black there, so I had both sides, you know what I mean, to draw from. You have such a unique and fresh voice, which is like such an annoying thing to say. Which has been difficult for me. She does. Which has been difficult for me because I feel like people will say, oh, I love you, but then they're like, but where can I put you? How can I market right. you? Right. And so that's that's always been like a struggle, but I enjoy what I do so much that it really mm -hmm. doesn't deter me or make me want to quit. Sure. Like I've been seeing people that have started way after I have like rise and I'm like, yeah. wow, you know, but I must really love this because yeah. I'm still doing it. But I've also seen people who started after me who have quit mm -hmm. because it was too true hard that. and it was a lot of work. That's true. And mm -hmm. it's so ridiculous that there's nowhere to put you because you're fucking, you're so funny and you're so great. Thank you, Marcella. So, I agree with bitch. her. I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. You Thank know you. what's funny though? Everybody who's great and successful on that level all have the same story that when they were on their climb, people were like, we don't know where to put you. Yeah. Because it's usually, because that means you're unique and you're not like everybody else and you're not cookie cutter. So they know where to put those people because everything's so formulaic. They're like, oh, I guarantee you they, they are gathering all the black sketch women right, right now. exactly. Trying to put together just another black lady yeah. sketch. They're going to call it the Ebony Skit Hour. <laughs> you know what I mean? I promise you that they're working on that. You are, because yeah. that's how this town works. Yeah. I am ghetto. I come from the ghetto, you know, like, and I'll get people say, 
wow, you you know, when I thought you were ghetto, but you're really smart, as if you can't be both. Right, right. right. And, or like, because there's no spectrum, you know, exactly. there's, we don't, we're not allowed the spectrum. Like, white people can be honey boo boo all the way to Grey's Anatomy. Right. We gotta, we have to be one or the other. In a box. And like a very what, about, what about Grey's boo boo? You know what I mean? Where's she at? Uh, I no, like that's that. right here. <laughs> and I she like speaks that. Spanish. I don't have to be talking about how I love Twinkies and, you know, like how I dry my, draw my eyebrows on and my grandmother hit me with a chancleta or whatever. The, I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. you, they lead you to believe that that's the way to do it, but I refuse. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to always go deeper and harder and make people uncomfortable because that's what I feel my job in comedy sure, is. Sure, yeah. And I'm never going to let anybody tell me that I need to be more... What's the word? Uh, less aggressive. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm never going to let anybody convince me. When I saw that Daily Call dumbass video with uh, all the dumb dumbs, everybody on the spectrum talking about how comedy is masculine and women are not funny unless oh, they're yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. you know, all the, the Ben Shapiro looking like Rain Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not gonna let anybody tell me. I had to sit next to that guy on at Politicon, talk, just shit on um, on Nanette the whole time. And my whole thing was like, I, if you don't like Nanette, you don't think it's funny, don't watch it. Turn yeah. it off. You yeah. know how many dumbass white boys we gotta watch in comedy? Yeah, exactly. Not I mean, but that's also the point. Isn't that the point of all these streaming services? Is like, what are the numbers? I mean, if right. you're watching and you're talking about, it, even if it's hate, you're creating discussion, which creates more numbers. So, Absolutely. like, if you actually hate it, you would actually not talk about it at all. I wouldn't. I mean, I don't. I don't listen. I don't listen to country music. Mm -hmm. But I ain't going to George Strait's page to say, you should die. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just don't, it, I don't care enough yeah. to be. But when it, with regards to comedy, I've had so, I, and I talked about this, I just did this interview. Women are always being, guarantee you watch when you start doing comedy, how many people walked up to you and said, hey, let me give you some notes. Oh, always yeah. Always being coached. I've like, gotten you this. Be, <laughs> sit yeah, down. sit down. Let me oh, tell you no. something. Uh, this is what you should do. Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't be dressing up as if, if you're pretty or. If, Corey Holcomb was the one that told me, if you ever have to uh, host the Oscars, you're gonna have to wear a gown and be funny. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to do comedy in a bikini and be funny yep. as shit. I'm so modest, but that's but your okay. personality. It but is. Also, but also, you got a man, so. Uh, actually, not anymore. She don't got a man anymore. But, yeah, I'm so modest. But you have, I mean, modesty got you a man? <laughs> it did. No, that didn't. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you ladies, how do you deal with internet trolls, the incessant harassment that we, as people in public, deal with? Because I get internet trolls all oh the time. Oh my God, you love it though. I do love it. You feed off of it. You've made it. a business out I of have. it. It's, it's fun. fun to watch your response. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me too. Responses. Yes, it's really fun. I enjoy. I don't have trolls really. You don't have trolls? That's because I don't post. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you don't post. So. Go get Kimberly Clark. Please. She, she needs trolls. My mother trolled me, so, you know, that's I'm good. kind of like... You need that. Yeah. That's they're not going to do it. They're going to be like, I, they're going to start doing the tweet, and they're going to be like, but did you see that ass? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I take it back. Yeah. No, but my mother, um, she used to say stuff like, my most beautiful daughter is Deborah," <gasps> Right? And so my Remember, dad, her name is Kim, you guys. And I have this three sisters, Kim. by the way. So, well, two sisters. There's three of us and a brother. Anyway. And then my dad will be like, Kimberly is beautiful, she's beautiful. And then my mother would be like, she's attractive. <laughs> she has nice teeth. That's, not, oh man, that's, I love that. I love, I wanna be your mom's friend. Man. My mom, my mom is evil. Okay. I, we, me, my bro, <laughs> your mom, that's subtle. That's that subtle <laughs> shit. That's that uh, Kaiser Soze shit. My mom, King Kong, right? Right. Me, my brothers, and my sister are sitting there. We're having this conversation. I told my mom, we all know you love Chino more than the rest of us. She said, where did you get that from? I said, you say it with your actions daily. And she said, well, today I will say it with my mouth. Oh, I man. do love him more than I love him. <laughs> I love that. Everybody started crying. Yeah. How old are you? <laughs> Bitch, that was four years ago. <laughs> why are you crying? Why is there You're crying? crying? Grown. That's hilarious. We knew it. it. We knew That's it. She's hilarious. Evil. We've got some questions to answer. If you want any questions answered, life, love, the pursuit of happiness or anger, whatever you need, submit them to youwelcomequestions at gmail.com. 
first question, how do you feel if a guy calls you high maintenance? What do you do and what do you respond with? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny was when I was in my early 20s, my brothers pulled me up, my own brothers pulled me aside and were like, you're too high maintenance, Marcella, you're too high maintenance. And I was like, wow, what? what do you mean high maintenance? Because I didn't even really like understand mm -hmm. the concept that, that young. And I'm like, you want a guy who doesn't drink, who doesn't smoke, who's gonna treat you good. That's not out there. I was like, wait, that this does simple things. But now it's like, those aren't the standards, but like back then those were right. like, that was all I wanted was just like a guy who was just a kind good of, guy. just a clean cut guy. Per your mm -hmm. perception. Yes, per my perception at that time, I was like, that's those are the only things that I need. And they're like, you're too high maintenance. And I'm just like, well, that doesn't make sense. And I didn't understand it. And then like, I've only gotten like only higher maintenance in that, in that sense of like what I want. But like, but I will fuck anything so I've been called high maintenance even though I don't think I actually have any standards but apparently I do it's so amazing how you become high maintenance because you just have standards right, right? Mm -hmm. so now I, I'm not a, a high maintenance person I don't want anybody to pay my bills or take care of me right. I just want to be t t treated with respect and dignity which is like but, but wow, it's high what a concept you know mm -hmm. it's high maintenance it's to high some maintenance. people it's like yeah. oh she requires too much and it's like really like I are you serious? Yeah. It's, it, I'm appalled by it. That's the other thing. I think for, for every guy, high maintenance is a different concept. I was going to say, what's the defi what is your definition yeah. of, you know? Maybe that's the response when someone yeah, what's says your you're high. What is your definition of, of high, high maintenance? maintenance? Because if it's just me wanting honesty, I guess so, bitch. Also, man, I can't be high maintenance. I grew up poor. Yeah. I've been raped. I've been beaten and mistreated, pushed out of a moving car. So excuse me if I may need <laughs> a couple extra hugs this week. You know, like excuse I may me. be a little high maintenance. I need you to open the door for me, my bad. <laughs> Without Shit. pushing me through yeah. the door, you know. Right. So I feel like, yeah, I have, I can be high maintenance to some people because I love the guys. I like, oh, I like the girls. My ex girl was so cool. She would just hang around the dudes and whatever. Yeah, she would just allow whatever because she didn't feel good she, about herself. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. You're dating someone who has low self esteem. Yeah. She's not high maintenance, quote unquote, whatever that is for you. That's what I think. All right, final question. Would you date a Republican? What if the dick was really good? <laughs> Why you gotta date him? Why can't you just smash him? Right That's now? what I was gonna say. What if the dick, like, if we, yeah, I don't know about dating, but I w if I didn't know he was a Republican and then we fucked and the dick was good, I might fuck him again. But I don't know. I wouldn't, like, date a Republican. Not right now. I would get a free Never. meal. <laughs> you making an assumption that that Republican can afford monsters. I know. I'm I just know. Because a lot of them assuming, will. Hey, some right. of them do. No, of course. The Republicans kind of different now. The face of the Republican. You know, I was I um I was I well, there's a friend of mine who she swings from dick to dick, um, and she I remember when she was about to be proposed to, and I was like, cause this guy like owned his own business and all this shit, and he was trying to get her to move to wherever whatever state he was in, and she was and this was years ago. Like this is maybe even when, no, it was like Obama era. I go, is he Republican? And she goes, I don't know, and I was like. Bitch, you need to ask him if he's a Republican because then your whole life will change mm -hmm. and your children will be raised Republican and conservative. And she had never, she had never asked him. She never asked any of the guys in her that she's dated what their background was. And I was like, see, that's where the real issues start with couples, mm -hmm. and also where the change and in influence comes into women's lives. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like you got to fucking ask these. I mean, now, especially now, but back yeah. then, I was like, that's fucking crazy that you don't know. Yeah. And how long was she dating him? They were together for a while. I mean, he was about to propose. Like, they, wow. Yeah. There's levels now. There are people that'll say, I'm a Republican, but I didn't vote for Trump. Yeah, yeah. Right, you right, know, right, like, right. there's a whole, whole bunch of... Yeah. I'm just fiscally conservative. You're still a Republican, bitch. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're fiscally conservative, your, your fiscal conservatism, it comes at the price of the people at the bottom mm -hmm. who are trying to survive. So yeah. even if you're fiscally conservative, you're still participating in, in the oppression of others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. so yes, I would fuck a dick if I didn't know he was conservative. Do those guys count? <laughs> <laughs> and that's you. Welcome everybody. Thank hey. you for tuning in. Thank you for coming and being here, ladies. Thank you so much. Uh, catch us next time. Peace.